Welcome to the show, Mama. I'm your host, Karen Haley, and whether it's your 15th time with me or your first, I am so honored that you're sharing this moment with me. Let's make it count, shall we? If you're ready to take big leaps and big strides on your IBD healing journey, this is going to be the episode for you, my friend, because I'm covering seven healing gems that are going to transform the way you look at IBD and your healing journey. These seven gems, they're the stuff that transformation is made of. There's lots of info that we'll be talking about here, so if you don't have something to write with, go ahead and press pause and then come straight back. I want to make sure that you get everything down that I'm about to share. And I can't wait to share these babies with you, so what do you say? We just dive into it. Let's go for it. Healing gem number one is the mother of all honeys. It's Manuka honey. Did you know that it's not just a coincidence that many of the best gut healing diets out there, including ones like SCD and GAPS, they include honey on their approved list of sweeteners. And honey isn't just a way to add sweetness to food. It's great for that, but there's other benefits of honey, real honey, especially raw honey. Actually, it has medicinal properties, properties that help your gut to calm inflammation, improve immune function, and increase diverse bacteria, increase the diversity of the bacteria in your gut. Those are all the things that we need to help calm our Crohn's and colitis. I just love that. I love that about honey. Everything about honey sounds promising, doesn't it? It sounds like a no-brainer, but before you run out and shop for honey, there's one thing that I do want you to be aware of. It's important to know that most grocery store honey is actually pretty crappy. According to Food Safety News, about three quarters of the honey we buy in American grocery stores. So for all my friends across the pond, we're just talking about America here. You probably have much better honey where you live, but American honey, three quarters of it, it isn't exactly what the bees produce. Due to the ultra pasteurization with commercial honey, most honey gets heated and that heating process removes contaminants and other particles. So that does sound good, but for gut healing, we need honey in its most natural and unheated state. So the pollen and the enzymes are intact. And that's where this most special type of honey called Manuka honey comes in. Let's go over just a quick background on Manuka honey, just in case this is your first time hearing about it. Manuka honey is produced in New Zealand, and it gets its name from where the bees pollinate. They pollinate in the Manuka bush. And while a while back, some researchers discovered that Manuka honey has considerably higher levels of enzymes than other honeys. So here's the key part. These enzymes, they work as a natural antibacterial agent. And these are the words that are music to our gut and our ears. Remember, when it comes to gut healing, it's all about the bacteria in our gut. And this honey is a way to help rebalance that bacteria. And by the way, I know we're talking about gut health here, but it's a fun fact to know that Manuka honey is actually, it's also helpful for other conditions that you might be dealing with, like acne, eczema. It's great for burns, sore throats, coughs, allergies. So it isn't just for your gut. It can help you with other things as well. These days, you might even be able to buy Manuka honey in your regular grocery store. I know that it's available in my beloved Wegmans, the grocery store that's in my neck of the woods, Um, but it probably is stocked in your grocery store as well. It's definitely in local health food stores, and of course, you can get it online. My favorite, favorite brand of Manuka honey is called Manuka Doctor, but there's other quality options out there. Just be sure to look for Manuka honey on the label. Let's go ahead and wrap up this healing gem, healing gem number one, with how to use it, because that's important. That's the important part. How do we use it to impart its healing properties on our gut? First of all, I want you to know that it works best when you consume Manuka honey daily. Now, just a tiny bit, daily, yes, but just a tiny bit, 
And thank goodness for that because it's not the cheapest of products. So when I say just a tiny bit, I'm talking about about a half a teaspoon a day. A little goes a long way with Manuka. It also isn't a panacea that's going to be like this miracle pill that works like magic the first time you use it. It works in conjunction with other healing gems like the ones I'm going to mention to you today. And it works best when it's used over time. Remember, it's giving you healing enzymes to help build the beneficial bacteria in your gut. This is a slow process, but rest assured, it does work. So how do you use it daily? Well, you can eat it straight. You could stir it into your homemade fermented yogurt if you're making that. And in case you're new to gut healing yogurt, there's more on that in episode number 12. I'll go ahead and link that in the show notes. So if you're new to the world of gut healing yogurt, check that out. So you could use it in your yogurt. You can use Manuka honey in smoothies. You could use in smoothies. (laughs) You could use it in a morning detox drink that I'll be talking about and giving you the recipe for in just a few minutes. You could put it in your tea. Pretty much anywhere that you use honey, you can use Manuka. All right, let's move on to healing gem number two, and it's coconut oil. I'm sure you've heard of this one, but I bet you've also heard that maybe there's mixed reviews around it. It's a saturated fat. Oh, oh, gasp. (laughs) Many people talk about the horrors of this kind of fat, the saturated fat. Here's the skinny. Here's the scoop. I'm going to give it to you straight. Coconut oil is a saturated fat, but it's actually in a category all its own. It's in a category of fats called medium chain triglycerides. And they're processed a lot different than other fats. It's really a true superfood. And there's a bazillion, yep, I'm getting technical with that term here. There's a bazillion uses and health health benefits for coconut oil. Coconut oil actually has a number of benefits that have nothing to do with the gut, just like Manuka honey. It's interesting to me that so many of these super healers, super gems for our gut health. They're also good for other parts of our body too. With coconut oil, we're also talking about good quality brain health here. It helps your brain function and it's also been attributed to energy production. It can help with fat burning and it can help raise your good cholesterol. That's the HDL. It's great for your skin and your hair. I love it for my hair. I love a coconut oil treatment when my hair feels dry. But my favorite benefit, favorite benefit of coconut oil is that it kills microorganisms because this is how it positively impacts our gut. Coconut oil is antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. This is serious help for an IBD gal. Just like with Manuka, it's got those natural antibacterial agents. These gems that we'll be talking about, you're going to hear this come up again, natural antibacterial agents with all of these healing gems. When you purchase coconut oil, you'll probably see it, and you probably have seen this before. It's labeled sometimes as refined, and then you'll see other kinds of coconut oil labeled as unrefined. Have you seen those before when you are shopping for coconut oil? Refined oil, it's more of a processed coconut oil. It's gone through a cleaning process to remove remove any impurities. The result is a much more mild tasting oil. So if you don't like a strong coconut flavor, and I know a lot of people that don't, this is going to be your better option. My kids, they don't really like coconut, that coconut flavor, so they don't mind if I use the refined one. And it just doesn't have that coconutty taste. I use it with... With cooking, really, I use it with things that I'm cooking at a higher temperature because the refined coconut oil, it has a higher smoke point. So that means that I can heat it up at a higher temperature, any food that I'm making, and it doesn't destroy the health properties. Then there's the unrefined coconut oil, and that's more of coconut oil in its untouched state. You might see this in the store, sometimes labeled as virgin or pure. There's definitely a bolder, coconutty taste here with unrefined. The gut healing factor, though, is greater. It has more anti-inflammatory properties and more antioxidants. I like to use it in raw foods, so when I'm not cooking, 
I might put it in a smoothie. My favorite place to put it is in a frothy topping for my Thai tea. My husband, he likes to put it in his bulletproof coffee. He makes his own version of bulletproof coffee. He puts the unrefined coconut oil in there and he loves it. So as long as you're not heating it, go ahead and use the unrefined. There's lots of options for the unrefined coconut oil as long as you don't heat it up. You might be asking, which one should I have in my house? Well, I have both because with the refined, I'm using it for cooking, baking, the unrefined, I tend to use that for raw foods or foods that I don't heat to a high temperature. So whatever you want to choose for you, but I do have both in my house. Okay, let's talk about healing gem number three. It's curcumin. Cur -cur curcumin. <laughs> curcumin. Curcumin. It's the active ingredient, the active anti-inflammatory agent in turmeric. That's a root that it kind of looks similar to ginger root. If you've ever bought whole ginger root in the produce section at your grocery store, except turmeric, when you break that root open, it's orange inside. You can buy turmeric in its powdered form, and many people do that and they cook with it. I have it in my spices cabinet in my house. I primarily use it in curry, curry dishes and cooking with curry. I use it in a delish mango chutney that I make that I love. It's the base for my mulligatawny soup, if you've ever had that. Many people think that they can get enough curcumin to help with the inflammatory aspects of IBD if they just cook with turmeric. But see, the problem here is that you have to eat so much turmeric that you probably wouldn't even have room to eat anything else. You need it in higher doses. Research studies show that you need high amounts of the curcumin to help conditions like IBD. You're just never going to get that in food form. So although it's great to use it in food because it adds so much flavor to a dish, most curcumin is used to help Crohn's and colitis in supplement form. And in supplement form, curcumin has been shown to be a powerful antioxidant as it reduces free radical damage, which then increases immune function and lowers inflammation. Now, that's just a recipe for awesome sauce for healing IBD, isn't it? There's such a positive amount of research out there. Research studies really abound with curcumin supplements testing out these type of supplements, supplements with their anti-inflammatory effects on IBD. I'll link to a couple of these studies in the show notes in case you're like me and you geek out on this kind of research. You can read them for yourself. The most promising studies regarding curcumin and IBD suggest dosing anywhere from one to five grams a day. And I know that's a wide range. Since everyone has different needs and sometimes limitations when it comes to supplements like this, it's really important that you check with your doctor first. I just want you to be armed with the information so that then you can take it to your provider, but definitely check with them first to see what would be the right dosing for you. There's one last thing that I want to mention about turmeric and curcumin, and that's that curcumin, the compound that we're trying to get high qualities of to help our IBD, it's actually difficult to absorb into our bloodstream. But when we add black pepper to turmeric for cooking or to curcumin for supplementing, it increases the absorption from the intestine into the bloodstream. That's kind of a cool fact, right? So in cooking form, if you're using the turmeric, just add black pepper. Whenever you're using it, just add black pepper to it. It will increase the absorption. And in supplement form, look for a label that includes something called piperine. That's the bioactive compound in black pepper. Okay, so healing gem number three was curcumin. Let's move on to your healing gem number four, therapeutic and adaptogenic teas. Oh, I love, love, love talking about this because tea is one of my favorite things. I'm not talking about your average tea though, like black tea or green tea, although I have to say that those are wonderful too for their antioxidant benefits alone. But when it comes to therapeutic and adaptogenic teas, I'm talking about herbal teas, herbal teas with healing properties. Tea in general is just, it's just calming, it's soothing, and it's what we want for our gut too. We write, right? We want like calm waters and soothing vibes for our gut. But the cool thing is about herbal tea is that you can match the plant 
with your gut symptoms. I love that about herbal tea. Herbal tea, it's not actually tea at all. It's herb plants, and they actually work to help quiet your gut struggles, both in the moment and over time when you use them regularly. Many of the healing gems that I'm talking about today, they work when you use them over time. Isn't that a really cool thing about adaptogenic tea and therapeutic tea? It's that they don't have to be in your system for days to take effect. You can take it one time and you can feel the positive effects. Now, with this healing gem as well, I do want you to keep in mind that herbal tea is an herb. Generally, we have to say that herbs are safe, but there are some herbs that might interact with medications that you take or even with a certain medical condition that you might have. So I do have to say it's always best to consult with your doctor if you're worried about something that you're taking or a condition that you have before you try any of the teas I'm about to mention. But here's just a sampling. There's so many, but here's a sampling of the amazing benefits, the amazing possibilities of therapeutic and adaptogenic tea. First up is ginger. I know you're familiar with ginger, ginger tea for morning sickness or nausea, but ginger tea, it also can help stimulate digestive juices, juices and help with bloating and gas. Ginger tea is also anti-inflammatory, so that's a big bonus. Another one is peppermint tea. This is my favorite, it's my go-to. It's wonderful for indigestion and to just relax the muscles of your digestive tract. It's my go-to for any kind of issues that you have, bloating, pain, gas after eating. Peppermint tea, it's awesome. Chamomile tea, that's another therapeutic tea. It helps reduce stress and anxiety. Something that we get, what I like to call the quadruple whammy that we're having right now. And that, that quadruple whammy of four is IBD. It's stressful enough, right? But we add kids into that. We've now added COVID-19 into that. And we're in the middle of the holidays. So we've gone to Stress City. Chamomile to the rescue. Chamomile is great in the evening to help you wind down. My chamomile tea, it's by Traditional Medicinals. And it has lavender in it, which also helps you feel relaxed and sleepy. So chamomile tea is great in the evenings. Next up is fennel tea. Fennel tea is fantastic for gas, bloating. It's also anti-inflammatory and it's a good source of vitamin C, which is great to boost the immune system. Licorice root, it's another kind of tea that can help heal the lining of the intestine. It also helps to keep your cortisol in balance. You might remember we talked about cortisol and stress in episode number nine. So jump back to that if you want more information about stress and IBD. And of course, I'll link it for you in the show notes. Nettle tea. Nettle tea is wonderful. And yes, I'm talking about nettle as in stinging nettle. Uh, It's made from the leaves and the root of that plant that maybe you got stuck in when you were gardening or you were out, out in the woods and it gave you that painful sting somewhere on your body. Yeah, that's the nettle I'm talking about. But in tea form, it's quite different. It helps relieve inflammation and it also helps prevent and treat diarrhea. Last but not least on our list of therapeutic teas is dandelion root tea. And I know what you're thinking. I know you're thinking about that horrible weed that's in your yard that you always want to get rid of, right? But dandelion root, it's fantastic. It has fantastic healing properties. This root is known as a bitter. So like other bitter greens, it would be something akin to kale or beet greens. It's a bitter. And tea in this form, it helps break down food in your system. That's something that can be really challenging for IBDers because we want our food in its smallest particle form in order to digest and absorb. And we struggle with that when we have IBD. So dandelion root tea after meals can be really helpful for that. It also helps to stimulate your digestive juices. So more help and aid in your whole digestive process. And if you have gallbladder struggles, dandelion root is great for that too. Okay, I could go on and on when it comes to healing teas and therapeutic teas, but that's at least a good place. I don't want to overwhelm you. That's a good place for you to get started. The ones I mentioned, these are my favorites. These are my favorite herbs, and I love that they can actually be blended and combined in many ways so that they don't only taste good, they 
work on multiple things at the same time. Herbal tea is a fantastic healing gem. Can you tell I get really excited about herbal tea? You should see my pantry. It's herbal tea galore. My family laughs at me, but I love herbal tea. It's one you can get started with right away because it's so easy to buy herbal tea these days. Remember, check with your doctor if you have any concerns about a condition you might have or medications that you're taking. But if you have the go-ahead, you can do this one today. Time for a quick check-in, Mama. How you doing? Are you still with me? Let's go ahead and move on. We're moving on to healing gem number five. And that healing gem is bone broth. Bone broth. Oh, oh, the power of bone broth and meat stock. It just can't be underestimated when it comes to all of these healing gems. When I first started my natural gut healing journey back in 2008, Bone broth was not a household name. It was something that was new to me. And it hadn't made the rounds in all of our grocery stores and all of our internet searches for a gut healer. So fast forward now to today, and not only do we have recipes to make this fabulous gut soothing broth, but we also have some store-bought options now as well. Let's make sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to bone broth and meat stock. What are we talking about exactly? And what are the benefits for your Crohn's and colitis? Because that's what it's all about, right? First, why do I mention meat stock and bone broth? Are they different or are they the same? Let's clear that up first. Meat stock is actually a little bit different. It's a little bit different than bone broth. Meat stock uses less water than traditional bone broth with the water only going, it goes just above the meat And it's also cooked for a shorter amount of time than bone broth. So meat stock, it's usually cooked for up to three hours or less. And bone broth is cooked for eight to even up to 24 hours in some cases. So when should you use meat stock and when should you use bone broth? Well, there's definitely a lot of theories and ideas that surround this topic and what's best. And honestly, I have to say that I've seen both work for gut healing, but technically, if you want to be technical about it, the best way to use this meat stock bone broth, it's to use meat stock when you're in gut healing mode because its nutrients are more concentrated and you really need those concentrated nutrients when you're in healing mode. Then save the bone broth for your maintenance and remission. It really works well for that case. All right, so now that we know what to drink and when to drink it versus bone broth versus meat stock, let's touch on why it's so important. Why is this a healing gem? Why is this on here? And why do I get so excited about it? It's all about the collagen and the gelatin that's formed when we create a broth from animal bones. Collagen is a protein and it's a nutrient that's naturally occurring in our body. Collagen is also found in beef chicken, fish. As collagen from these bones is cooked for a long period of time, or at least a few hours, it forms this natural gelatin. And if you're thinking gelatin, jello, yes, you're on the right track here. And gelatin, it has some outstanding benefits for everyone, but it's especially helpful for those of us with gut challenges. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a box, run out and buy a box of Jell-O flavored gelatin or even the unflavored that knocks unflavored gelatin. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm talking about here. This gelatin is much richer and it's much more nutritious, the gelatin that's produced from your bone broth and meat stock. Gelatin from high quality bone broth It's been shown to help restore the gut lining. Oh, so important, that gut lining. It can restore the gut lining. It can help you with fighting food sensitivities. It can help with growing probiotics in your gut, and it can help reduce general inflammation. How much of a healing gem is that, right? You can see why I love it. I love this bone broth idea as being a healing gem. I really just cannot stress this enough. If you haven't already, it's time to jump on the meat stock bone broth healing train. If you only get one healing gem from me today, if you only try one, make it this one. Try for one to five cups of stock a day. 
I know that's a lot, but work your way up. You can move on to bone broth when you're ready. And of course, at that point, you can lower it down as well. Many of these healing gems I'm mentioning today, they have a learning curve. And bone broth is one of those with a learning curve because it does take some time to figure out how to make it, find a recipe. Just know that if you're stuck or if you don't know how to add any of this into your daily routine, don't, don't hesitate. Get in touch. People get in touch with me all the time. Mamas in the gut love community, clients of mine, feel free to get in touch. And if you need a recipe, if you need a recipe for meat stock or bone broth, feel free to email me at hello at karenhaley.com. That's K-A-R-Y-N-H-A-L-E-Y. Hello at karenhaley.com. I'm always happy to share my thoughts and my recipes with you. All right. We've made it to healing gem number six, and that one is your morning detox. I mentioned this one a little bit earlier and said that I had a recipe for you, and I do. It's your morning detox. Remember the turmeric and the manuka honey that we talked about? Those were healing gems from earlier. It's time to start actually bringing some of these healing gems together. How can you use them together? Enter the morning detox. Now, for the most part, I'm not a fan of detoxing or cleansing or fasting for moms with Crohn's or colitis. It's just too disrupting for us. Our guts are screwed up enough, especially when we're in a flare. The benefit, it just doesn't outweigh the risk. Cleanses and detoxes, they can be beneficial when you're in remission, but not during a flare. But in one area, in one area, I'm a huge fan of the so-called detox because in truth, it's not really a detox like many of us think of a detox. It's more of a daily toxin releasing ritual that will benefit you gently. That's the key there. It'll benefit you gently every day. And why do we do this in the morning? It's a morning detox because as we sleep at night, Toxins are building up in our body and in our bones. So the morning is the perfect time to go ahead and just flush these suckers away, flush them away for good, release these toxins in a small but mighty way for the good of your gut and the good of your entire healing pathway. The ingredients in your morning detox are the key here. You're going to start with one glass, that could be 8, 12 ounces, of room temperature to lukewarm water. No cold water here. What we're looking for is water that is at the temperature of your body. You're going to drink this along with the ingredients that I'm going to tell you about, and you will go ahead and drink this in the morning after waking up. Before you put anything else in your body, that's when you drink your morning detox. What you personally add to this, it might vary depending on your immune function and your inflammation level, but I just want to give you all of your options. You'll want to work up to adding all of them, but we'll go ahead and I'll give you the full recipe and then you can add up to them at your own pace. Now remember, we're starting with that room temperature water. And to that, if you have your pen and paper handy, it's now a good time to write this recipe out. So you have your 8 to 12 ounces of room temperature or lukewarm water. To that, you're going to add one quarter to one half juice of a fresh squeezed lemon, one quarter teaspoon of ground turmeric. There's that turmeric. One pinch of black pepper. Do you remember? Do you remember about the black pepper? Why do we add that? Yep, that's right, because it's going to increase the absorption of the turmeric. Also in there is one tablespoon of quality, and I mean quality, apple cider vinegar. It should say on the label, with the mother. My favorite brand of apple cider vinegar is Bragg, so look for that one. And then lastly, one half teaspoon of your Manuka honey. Now you already know the benefits of turmeric and Manuka honey. We already talked about those. But let's spend some time talking about the other key ingredient in our morning detox and that's the apple cider vinegar, or ACV, for those of us in the know. Now, ACV, it's not something that I recommend for anyone in a bad flare, or if you have ulcers in your mouth, it's acidic, so it's just too harsh. It's too harsh for your system. If that's the case, wait until the ulcers and the inflammation calm down just a little bit, 
And by the way, bone broth is a great way to do just that. Then you can move into the ACV. You might need to start your morning detox with, if you're that bad, you might need to just start it with water, lemon, and a little bit of manuka honey. Maybe things are so difficult. Maybe it really is a severe flare. Maybe you even start with just water. I'm not kidding here. I'm serious. Just drinking a glass of room temperature or lukewarm water when you wake up in the morning before you eat anything, it gets your detoxification pathways moving and gets your body ready for proper digestion and absorption. So you could even start with just water. But when you're ready for it, ACV, it's going to be a godsend for you. It's amazing the health benefits that are included in ACV. It's antiviral, it's antibacterial. There's that word again, antibacterial. Lots, you're gonna hear that a lot with these healing gems, right? Antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's antiparasitic. Bam, <laughs> drop the mic. Did you hear that? Antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic. Yeah, amazing. Talk about a healing gem. ACV, it helps resolve other things even, low stomach acid. It gets straight to the heart of your detoxification process. In a word, ACV is awesome. Lemon, there's lemon in there too. And lemon is also a fantastic addition to your morning drink. Number one, because it adds some just a tangy, lemony flavor to it. But number two, also, it's high in vitamin C. So it helps boost your immune system. So how does this morning concoction taste? You might be wondering, I've never put these ingredients together before. It sounds kind of interesting. How does it taste? Well, I have to tell you that I love it. But people tell me I'm kind of weird about that. So I think it tastes like a tart lemonade. It's different and it's possible that in the beginning you might just kind of tolerate it or think, oh, it's okay. But I'm willing to bet that over time, you grow to love it as much as I do. Remember, as with all of these healing gems, take your time with this one. Add one ingredient at a time. Do it when you don't have those mouth ulcers and you're not so inflamed that your body just aches all over. In cases like this, start with just water or water with even just manuka honey, if you can tolerate it, a little bit of lemon, and that's absolutely fine. You'll just move forward with more additions when you're ready. All right, we've made it to healing gem number seven. I'm sad that this is about to end because I love talking about these healing gems, but we've made it to number seven. I won't keep you in suspense anymore. I did though say the best one, the best healing gem for last. And it all goes back to that gut bacteria again. Healing gem number seven is the ultimate gut balancer. It's probiotics. In capsule form, in yogurt, in other fermented foods, probiotics are vital for bacterial balance and gut health. And that's really what we need when it all comes down to it with IBD. That's what we're looking for, that whole microbiome bacterial balance. When it comes to Crohn's colitis and in all of our symptoms, we have to talk about that, that microbiome. According to the Global Healing Center, I want to say this with their definition and not mine, but according to the Global Healing Center, the microbiome is a collection of microbes that live in and on the human body. Our microbiome, it influences everything from our thoughts to our behaviors to how our gut performs. In fact, interesting research shows that our microbial genes outnumber our human genes by a factor, get ready for this, of 100 to 1. Crazy, right? Just think about all those creepy crawly critters, the good and the bad, just hanging out inside and outside of your body. I know, it's kind of creepy, right? But it actually is a good thing. In Crohn's and colitis, one thing is for sure, our microbiome, it's whacked out for most of us, right? And yes, of course, that whacked out, that's a technical term I'm coming at you with. But probiotics in supplement and in food form, they can help bring your own personal ecosystem back into balance. It's a beautiful thing. I wanna talk about 
probiotic-rich food first because ultimately that's the place we really want you to get to, having all of your probiotics in food form. Food glorious food. Yes, food. Foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, tempeh, and that's um, fermented soy. That's what that is. Kombucha, that fermented tea that I bet you've heard of. Yogurt, sour cream, and other fermented vegetables. You can ferment any vegetable like carrots, pickles, love, love, love pickles, beans, any vegetable. You want to get your fermented foods in all of these kinds of forms. They're the perfect source for your probiotic, <clears throat> your probiotic rich foods. So these foods, they're fantastic. Like I said, they're rich in bacteria. They promote balance within your digestive system. But with the exception of, I would say, yogurt, they just might be a little bit too strong as a starting place for you. So sometimes we do need to take a step back when we're getting started and start with the probiotic um, sources in supplement form instead of in the food form. And I have to go back here to my comment about doctors, that doctor warning that I have. Remember, I'm not a doctor, and it's really up to you and your doctor to figure out the best brand, the best dosing for you. But like always, I want you to be able to go into your next doctor's appointment armed and dangerous with information. So I have to give it to you straight. Here's the deal. There are two probiotic brands that I've seen that show the research with regards specifically to IBD is most promising. And those two are VSL number three and VisBiome. Both of these are so similar and they're both very potent, very strong. Let's look at these separately though, just so that you get an idea of what each one is all about. First up, let's talk about VSL number three. VSL number three comes in capsule or sachet form. The sachet is just a packet with a powdered probiotic in it. And dosing is, like I said, potent, exceptionally high for a probiotic. It starts at 112.5 billion CFUs, not million, billion CFUs. And that CFU stands for colony forming units. And then it moves all the way up the spectrum to 450 billion and then into 900 billion CFUs. I have to put this in perspective for you here, just so that you really get this potency that I'm talking about. When you consider that most drugstore probiotics, they start at about 1 billion, maybe 3 billion CFUs, it kind of just blows your mind here with how much probiotic benefit we're talking about here. VSL number three, though, it does have some added ingredients, and I really want you to keep these in mind in case you are sensitive to them. The main ingredient that bothers some is the cornstarch. There's just a tiny bit in there, and I'm sure it's in there to like as an anti-caking agent so that the powder doesn't stick together, doesn't clump. But if you're sensitive to corn, it's in this probiotic. So this probiotic wouldn't be the one for you. And thankfully, there's the other one, VisBiome, which does not have cornstarch in it. Again, it's very similar. The dosing is the same. There is a questionable ingredient in this one as well for those with sensitivities or allergies. There is a small amount of dairy in VisBiome. So keep that in mind. Both the sachet form and the capsule form of VisBiome contains a little bit of dairy. The other thing it contains is something that I really dislike, which is natural flavors. These are two words, ugh, natural flavors. These are two words I really dislike, can you tell? The ingredient natural flavors, it isn't actually regulated by the FDA, and therefore it could mean anything. What the heck is natural flavors? Drives me nuts when it's in there. So I don't know what natural flavors is, but if you find that you're sensitive to it, it could be either because of the dairy or the natural flavoring. And if you're on SCD, I do wanna point this out, if you're on SCD, neither of these probiotics are legal. So you're gonna to want to decide if this is the right thing for you. Now, when you hear me talking about them and you hear me talking about the cornstarch and the dairy and the, and the natural flavors, you might be thinking, oh, I don't wanna take any of these, it sounds horrible. But trust me, 
most people do not have a problem. These uh, amounts are so small. And if you are only a sensitive a little bit to these, you might be able to tolerate them. It's worth trying. It's worth looking into because they are really the only probiotics out there that are at this massive dose. So anyway, just some food for thought for you. By and large, though, I do have to say that these are really the best offerings when it comes to probiotics to help your intestinal Florida, Florida. <laughs> I had to keep that in here because that's kind of funny. Yeah, to help your intestinal flora when it's in a state, haha, a state of dysbiosis. Oh, uh, I crack myself up. But anyway, if you have IBD, you better believe that you do want to think about this. You do want to think about the probiotic benefit here because there is definitely some dysbiosis going on. All right, and oh, one other thing. With the 900 billion dose, that does require a prescription. So you'll want to talk to your doctor before you order this type of probiotic. All right, these probiotics, they're potent, but sometimes they're the exact thing you need to get that IBD flare under control. I do want to mention that for my SCDers out there or for those who don't want to take something at such a high dose, I have had clients have success on a few other probiotics, so I want to mention those. And just FYI, they're in the CFU, those colony-forming unit. They're in the CFU range of anywhere from 10 to 25 billion. So yes, a lot less, but some people do find benefit from these brands as well. So I do want to mention them. They're also a lot less expensive. And those would be companies like Claire Labs, Pure Encapsulation, and for those SCD mamas out there, Kirkman Labs, they make SCD legal probiotics. So there you have it. We made it. Seven amazingly healing gems that every IBD mama needs to know about. Although there's more to IBD healing than these seven gems. And those might be things like including medication, other supplements we didn't even talk about today. It might include lifestyle and dietary changes, right? It's a wheel of wellness. It takes a village. It's not just about these healing gems, but these healing gems are crucial. They're crucial to getting where you want to be with your IBD remission. Before we wrap up, let me tell you how you're going to do it like a mom, right? We always have to do that in every episode. How are you going to do it like a mom? How can you do these seven gems with motherhood in mind? Number one, you're going to start small. You don't need to start with all seven tomorrow. That wasn't the goal of today. I just wanted to give you all the possibilities out there for you. Pick one. Pick the one that's calling to you. Is there one that I mentioned today that maybe you had heard of before and you wanted to try it? Start there. Gut healing is never a sprint. It's a marathon, and the one who finishes last is just as much a winner. Yes. So my tip number one for you is to start small. Number two, tip number two is that with most of these gems, not only do you want to start with just one or two of them, but within the gems themselves, I want you to start out with a very small bit of it. Don't start with the full recommendation all at once. Our guts, when we have IBD, Crohn's and colitis, we are extra sensitive and we need to treat ourselves that way. It's not unusual to have a reaction when you start any of these healing gems. Even though over time, they may prove to be beneficial. At first, they may not start out that way for you. So always start with a small amount and then go ahead and work your way up. Take meat stock, for example, the meat stock we talked about. I mentioned that you can drink up to five cups a day, but I'd never tell anyone to start there. We have to let our body get used to this new thing in our system. So start small. Remember, go slow. It's a marathon. And always be the tortoise, never the hare. You never want to be the hare in the race. Always be the tortoise. The tortoise finishes, but it goes slow to get there. Because number three, one more thing, because of this fantastic longer form show I get to do on the podcast every week, and I love that. I love that I get to talk to you longer because I can never stop talking. So I love that we get to do that on the podcast. But I was able to go into more detail about these healing gems than I normally get to in social media, things like that. 
And that's wonderful. But believe it or not, there's actually more to cover with each of these. I had kind of just scratched the surface, even though I still gave you a ton of information. So if you want guidance on this, if you're feeling a little bit confused, you want some help implementing these gems, I'm here for you. Remember, I do have those free 30-minute one-on-one consultation sessions. And if you're looking to find out more and you want to hear about how we can work together to create a step-by-step plan for you to help you put these healing gems into practice in your life, I want you to go to the show notes, click on schedule a session with me, and we can then go there. We can talk about it on a free 30-minute call. I can't wait to connect with you. If you need that, know that it's always available to you. All right. All right, Mama. That's a wrap. That's a wrap on seven healing gems. You've got the info. What you do with it, it's up to you. I know you can do this, though. You've already proved that you're a rock star mama. I know that you are. Who's better at taking control, taking the reins on your IBD than you? Do me a favor. Keep me posted. Let me know how it's going. I love connecting with you. Until we chat again, I'm wishing you a cheeky and healthy IBD healing journey.